Hi, my name is Serafina and I was born and raised in a religious cult in Aotearoa, New Zealand until the age of 17. I grew up behind these walls, but luckily I did most of my schooling at the local school, so I did have some interactions with the outside world. I lived in this old bus we converted to a home after living in tents for three years with my two brothers, my mum and my dad. This is me when I was 13 during one of our 11 weekly church meetings. This one was foot washing. We would wash each other's feet following examples set out in the Bible. My life in the cult was a mixture of a happy childhood, milking goats, pet lambs, riding horses, training sheepdog puppies, camping, swimming, running around with the other kids and being part of a community, but also being heavily indoctrinated with religious propaganda, fear, alienated from society, working hard, praying and being raised in servitude to the cult and its leader. This scene is completely normal to me. This is the man who started the cult, a very charismatic human being who ruled with a psychotic mixture of charisma and fear, using his leadership skills for his own personal gain. Women were considered less than men. We were taught that women were the cause of all sin and were not to be listened to or trusted. Women were considered unclean when menstruating and education was unnecessary as their primary purpose was to have babies and look after the men. This is the secret property we had in the mountains. We were taught we were going to be hunted, persecuted and likely killed for being Christians. So we believed we would have to run and hide in the mountains. Hence the reason for the 40 plus horses, a stockpile of guns and ammunition and the secret property. I was told and I believed that I would die before I reached the age of 20. I always kept a backpack ready to grab at any moment and it was always a mixture of fear and excitement at the thought of having to run, hide and live off the land. This is me being baptised when I was 13 and here celebrating my 15th birthday in our bus. So I was born into this life, into this community, this was my home, my family, my childhood. It gave me a sense of purpose and belonging. I attended a regular public school, which was hard. I was different, so it was easy to be the target of bullying and being spat on for being part of the God Squad. Yet in the cult, I had confidence. I knew my place, I knew what the rules were, and they were very black and white. If I did this, I would go to heaven, and if I did that, I would go to hell. Yet there wasn't much room for developing my own identity in the cult, nor having the confidence to do so out of the cult either. I eventually started to question why only 350 people living in Waipara, New Zealand were the only people going to heaven and everyone else in the world was going to hell. I didn't understand and I spent many nights as a child on my knees in tears praying to God, asking him to be more merciful, begging him to save all the people in the world and telling him it wasn't their fault they didn't know him. I often felt powerless and confused. When I asked an elder in the church why we were the only ones going to heaven and everyone else going to hell, he told me not to ask questions, that it's not my place to question and that I should just accept and trust God. But he then went further to say that I shouldn't be thinking my own thoughts, that I should let Jesus control my thoughts. As I grew older, I used to dream about running away and living in the world as a famous dancer or a singer, but I was afraid of the world too. A defining moment for me was when I was 15. I saw what I assumed were gang members. They had leather jackets, tattoos, piercings. Uh, they were smoking cigarettes. You know, all the really bad, evil stuff. <laughs> and I remember standing there, wearing my headscarf, just quietly watching them, observing their interactions, and being totally fascinated by them. I looked at their faces and at their eyes, and they seemed kind. They were smiling, laughing, talking being friendly with each other and the strangers around them. And I remember thinking, we aren't like that. We aren't friendly and engaging with strangers. And it seemed really nice. And I wondered how we knew these people were evil. And I wondered what defined evil. Was it their clothes? Was it because they had tattoos? Was it because they smoked cigarettes? I was taught to judge that anyone who wasn't one of us was a bad and evil person. Someone to be feared and not to be trusted. But as I looked, I couldn't see evil in their smiles, only kindness in their eyes and on their faces. In true cult style, it fell apart due to sexual abuse, incest, rape, you name it, which I was lucky to evade. And at 17, I still had no idea I was living in a cult. I knew we were different, but that was all. When your whole world collapses around you, when your foundation falls apart, 
when everything you believe to be real and true is taken away in an instant, and when the people you loved and trusted the most, the ones who held your world together, are the ones responsible for it being torn apart, and when your whole life turns out to be a lie, you have nothing left to hold on to. When I took my headscarf off for the first time, I genuinely expected to be struck down by lightning. I remember that day well. I'd look up, look behind me, waiting, wondering what was going to happen. But nothing happened. I felt like I had gotten away with something monumental. So I decided to try something else. I wore trousers <laughs> instead of a skirt. Nothing. I got my ears pierced. Nothing. I went into a music store which was previously forbidden. Nothing. There were absolutely no consequences to anything that I did. And life became a mixture of fun, excitement, freedom, and absolute emotional chaos. Since then, I've lived and traveled overseas. For many years, everything I own fitted into this backpack. I was a keen skateboarder. I studied martial arts, both Aikido and Wing Chun. I worked in one of the four major banks in Australia, climbing the corporate ladder. I lived through the Christchurch earthquake, and I have never been more afraid or felt more powerless in my entire life. My world collapsed around me again, and I had no control over it. None of us did. I legally changed my name to Serafina. The cult leader named me Miriam. I always hated it, especially the spelling. I changed it after watching the movie The Golden Compass. There's a character in there called Serafina Pekela, and I immediately fell in love with the name and just had to have it. It was mine. <laughs> it means fiery angel. I'm a mother, and I was a single mother for a period of time. And that is just some of my life journey since leaving the cult 22 years ago. What coming out of a religious cult has taught me is that there are no absolutes in life. The rules are all made up by someone, somewhere, somewhere. Everything can be changed. Every rule, every idea, every concept, every belief, every cultural and societal way of being can be changed. We are controlled and limited only by our own minds by our ideas of what we think we should be based on what we have been taught, when really anything is possible. I remember reading a story years ago about how elephants are trained to not run away. They tie a baby elephant to a pole with a big chain and leave it there. Then as the elephant grows, they gradually replace the chain with a rope, making it thinner and thinner, until eventually the elephant is fully grown and tied only with a small twine. But the elephant still won't move away from the pole because it believes it can't, like when it was a baby. And we are the same. We are gradually taught that we are chained. But we are not. We are free. Today I do many things, but one I am most excited about is Teaspoons of Change, a concept I share with my partner Darcy, which are the personal choices, decisions and actions that have a positive impact on people and the planet. My upbringing in the cult, it could have defined my doubt in the world. It could have shattered my life. But I've come through it with a love for life and an immense gratitude and excitement to wake up each day. My purpose in life is to help create a world where every person is empowered to own their freedom, where every person can be who they choose to be, a world where we are one community with the same access and the same opportunity for everyone everywhere. I love to connect, listen, learn, co-inspire from people from all backgrounds, all cultures and all ages. Life has taught me to see beyond the limitations of culture, beyond the limitations of society and beyond the limitations of belief. Life has taught me to embrace change and to create new ways of thinking, being and doing in the world. And in closing, I'd just like to leave you with my favourite quote from Howard Thurman. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Thank you. <laughs>